What is it like living tiny? It's a question we get absolutely all the time. Everyone's curious, and I mean, I can't blame them. It's certainly a unique experience, to say the least. But it's really hard to describe. If someone just asks me that question, I can't just have a casual conversation and describe exactly what the feeling is like. And I mean, the conversations usually go something like this. Hey, how's life in the tiny home? You liking it? You loving it? Oh, you know, it's it's good. We're loving it. It's, uh, it's tiny. <laughs> Oh, 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 good one, good oh, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's not exactly an answer. It's not really divulging what's, what it's like inside these walls by any means. But to be fair, it's not like we're skirting around the answer on purpose. It's kind of hard to really to put into words. It's a lot easier to show it. This is our loft. This is where we sleep. This is our bed. This is Kiwi. Our cat, he, he lives and thrives and loves it up here. It's pretty much his bedroom at this point, but this is our loft. You can see it's small. My head, like I'm not a small guy, I'm six foot tall, and my head grazes and hits the ceiling all the time. It's clearly cramped, it's hard to get around, it's much different than a bedroom in a typical house or apartment where you can just walk up and flop on your bed and that's, that's that, you call it a day. However, in here, you crawl to bed, and when you wake up, the ceilings here, you crawl out of bed. It makes it a lot harder to put on bed sheets, but I like it. Personally, I find it cozy. I like the smaller space like this. It just makes life more difficult, if that makes any sense. Now, that being said, though, crawling around up here, getting in and out of bed, it doesn't hurt me. It, if anything, I would imagine that it probably helps me in the long run with limbering up and crawling around and stretching and those sort of things. It's like a, a mini yoga session every time I get out of and go to bed but it's what happens. You live in a tiny home, you live tiny. Excuse me. What are you making? Chick well, prepping chicken noodle soup. Oh, gonna be a good lunch. Mm -hmm. Sweet, look at that. Is that the broth you made or the stock you made? It is, yeah. Doesn't it look kind of like amazing? It does. Good Way job. better than store bought, hey? No kidding. Uh, this is part of tiny home living for sure. The small space within the kitchen, there's not a whole lot to work. You gotta make do with what you have. What's your least favorite part about cooking in a tiny home kitchen? Um, not having a dishwasher. Well, and not necessarily not having a dishwasher, just like the pile of dishes all the time and it piles up so quickly. That's true. It, as soon as you're done cooking something, there's not much room to store dirty dishes. No. You should be piling them right here. So you gotta do dishes like almost instantly, otherwise first thing in the morning you're doing dishes and you're regretting your life choices. But. Yeah. I think it might have been easier if we had a sink that was like divided. A double sink? Yeah. That's fair, but we do have this good size like farmhouse sink. I do cool. love our sink, but maybe if it was divided it might be easier. I don't know. Can't blame you on that. Um, where are you going to be working today? Are you taking the office, the counter? Uh, the office, if that's okay. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll take the counter over there. But actually, we should probably show the office. That'd be a good space to talk about. Because, coming down this way, check it out. On this end of the tiny home, we have our office. We did a lot of customization, if you will, to our build with this when we were having our builder design everything for us. We wanted this to be an office space where we can work because we knew we'd be doing a lot of work at home. Nicole's a photographer, I'm a videographer, and we're doing content creation, we have our podcast. So an office space where we could have a desk was extremely important. So we have standing, sit desk, full, normal office chair. The space isn't huge, but we do have a door. We do have a window we can open up and it's touch my fingers tip to tip. I have enough room to barely kind of go back and forth. It's a large closet space is essentially what it is, but it was important to make sure we had a work at home environment. And not only that, on this side, we've got storage for everything we need. We got office supplies down here. We got filing over on this side, camera gear, whatever we need. 
readily available. Now, initially, the build that we have, our home, the layout was actually um, not a custom. It was already a prefab like layout. You could just pick, hey, we want this layout. But we did some customization to it, and this office was part of that customization. They initially had this much smaller, just wide enough for a uh, washer and dryer unit, which were supposed to go here, stacked on top of each other. Instead, we took those, put them in our bathroom over here underneath the counter, which, I mean, to be fair, we lose cupboard space, but we also gain all this space as well. And in turn, we gain the desk space. So we actually elongated the room a bit to make it feel more like a, a space we could sit in comfortably, push those out there, and boom, we have a full office. Now, as highly as I am talking about the space and how much I love this office, it can quite literally stink in here sometimes because we have our uh, cat litter box right there for Kiwi. So yeah, if he drops a fresh one, you're in here. Usually you're opening the window and evacuating for a few minutes. But I mean, that's okay. We do have this pet deodorizer on hand at all time for cat litter box. So if it is bad, we can put it on there, open the window, and it's good to go in like two minutes tops. We love Kiwi, but he is a bit of a stinky cat sometimes. But Nicole's working in here, which means I work out here today. So we have this counter space, we have the office, we have our couch back there. Um, we have two lofts, one being in our bedroom, one being up here, mostly storage space, but we can use it for whatever we need to. We can go sit up there and chill and work if we want. It's not a big deal. But we do have a bunch of spaces where we can get work done. And this is where I'm getting work done today. Now, another topic that gets brought up to us on a frequent basis is we need space. So when someone's talking about a tiny home, they're like, oh, you know what? I would never be able to move in a tiny home because me and my spouse or partner or whoever, we need space from each other at times. That's right. You definitely do. I, don't, I, I get that. Trust me. I get that. And I'm sure Nicole would get it too. But the thing is, it's easy to create space for yourself. You don't need to get an extreme distance between each other to create space. For example, that's why we put the office at the far end. We thought it was a fantastic idea to have this little excluded room on the end of the tiny home to create space for yourself. Hey, look at me. Right now I'm sitting here at the counter, over here, while Nicole's over on the far end doing her thing. She just finished up with chopping all this up. She's now heading to the office. She's got space. Watch, look. There she is. Space all the way on the other side. She's doing her thing and she can even close that door. Go ahead, close the door. And now she's alone. Space isn't the distance. It's having a space to yourself if you need to. And we have that. So she can be over there. I can be up in the loft, whatever needs to happen. Now in scenarios where we really need to get out of the house for space, Luckily, we do have that as well, because Nicole has a photography studio for her job, so she can go there, work, I can go there, work, I can go and do some things, but generally, it's not something we do to get space from each other. It's usually we're cooped up in the house too long, we've been working nonstop at our laptop day after day, and we need to get out of the house, so we go work at the studio or something. It's there if we need to get space, but it's typically not something that we, we need, because we've created enough spaces in our tiny home to give us space. Does that make sense? I don't know. I think I'm just rambling at this point, but distance isn't the key factor. It's having a spot alone and you can have a spot alone in a tiny home just fine because hey, we do. But since Nicole's done in the kitchen, I'm going to put my work on hold for a minute because I got something else here. So the tiny home lifestyle in itself offers a lot. I mean, we're financially free. We're able to actually do what we want for a living. As I mentioned, Nicole's a photographer. I'm a videographer. We do content creation. We have our podcast. It's absolutely incredible. And if it wasn't for the tiny home, we would not be able to have chased those dreams. That's in fact why we got the tiny home in the first place. So we could do what we wanted for a living, not have to do the whole rat race nine to five sort of thing. And here we are living the life we want. If we want, we can raise chickens. And if we want, we can make sourdough in the middle of a workday. Meet Edith von Guttenberg II. So she's Edith von Guttenberg II specifically because um, we haven't made sourdough for a while. And we recently went to make another starter and Edith von Guttenberg I, which we started on January 2nd, did not do so well. Uh, so we restarted and now we have Edith von Guttenberg II. And she's ready to make her first loaf of sourdough bread. So I'm gonna make something and tomorrow morning we're gonna have a fresh baked loaf of sourdough bread. We're gonna have fresh eggs ready to go from our little homestead farm here. And our breakfast is gonna be amazing because of the lifestyle that we live. 
how many people can just stop working whenever they feel like to make some sourdough, check on the chickens. We're living a lifestyle far better than we ever dreamed of at our other house and our other jobs. The tiny home has allowed this to happen. I'm excited for this. First loaf of sourdough. I missed it. You missed sourdough? Oh yeah, big time. Well, we're gonna be having a lot more of it. And we actually, we're doing up a bit of a recipe book for some of the cool recipes we've been trying lately. And this is our classic sourdough recipe from our little, our little book. The, oh no, one gram over. You gotta have it just perfect. Okay, we'll just put this down. So yeah, that's Tiny Home Living. It's pretty awesome in my opinion. It's hard to describe to people when you're just talking to them. It's much easier to show, but I mean like, yeah, Tiny Home Living, it's tiny, but it's yep. awesome. So when we say that to people, we mean it. I mean, it has its challenges, but what doesn't really? Everything does. Yeah, okay. So should we have some chicken soup? Chicken well, noodle soup? We're gonna have some chicken noodle soup for lunch and then tomorrow, we're gonna have mm. sou fresh sourdough and fresh, farm fresh from our little homestead Yum. eggs. It's gonna be a good breakfast. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Don't forget to like, hit that little bell notification. We appreciate you, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.